And you should be very familiar with Katie Sample, who has been presenting all day long. I am Justin Sims, special education background, <clears throat> also a assist technology regional specialist. As we've mentioned um, quite frequently, uh, we are Louisiana AIM. Uh, we provide services and we're particularly based, Katie in Baton Rouge, I myself in Alexandria, but we also have resource centers in Lafayette and Minden as well. And we provide professional development, assist technology consults, loans. Uh, we work hand in hand with PPEP, orientation mobility, uh, Braille large print materials, and we also pro provide technical assistance. So anything along those lines, or if you wanted to re-deliver professional development or you had more additional questions, sometimes a service request is the best way to reach us and the link is provided right here. And you can also partner with us if you wanted a lot more detail, if you wanted a lot more hands-on approach, if you want us to come in and help you, for example, reshape and streamline your assist technology process leadership toolbox would be a good package for you. Or if you wanted to really train teachers, get them to integrate assist technology into the curriculum, maybe enhance it with the digital resources you saw today, all those things are possible. And of course, we'd love to help give all students a voice, which is what Spring to AAC is about. <laughs> she, she did that thing. Katie raising the roof. Our objectives today, we're going to determine, um, well, firstly, rather quickly, when is communication plan really going to be required? Um, examine the process of creating and completing a plan. Um, look at the appropriate documentation that's going to have to be reflected within the IEP itself. And then we'll provide some additional case studies and some resources because we can't cover every possible scenario uh, within one hour. Um, so we'll, we'll stick to one format. You'll see a girl named Jennifer. She's going to be popping up a good bit. But we like to provide some additional case studies as well. And our steps, if you, that was our goals, this is kind of the flow things are going to go today. We're going to look at the GSI and quickly jump into the communication plan because that's where we ask the questions if we need one or not. We'll look at some goals, accommodations that commonly come up. Um, we're talking about this kind of thing and look at the IP for our complex communicators and we'll look at some supports that are needed. You go ahead. And right at the very beginning, right at the very beginning of the IP, does the child have limited or no verbal skills? Yes or no? Does the student have significant impairment in areas of receptive or expressive language that include but not limited to impairments in the areas of apraxia, articulation? Uh, fluency, pragmatics, auditory processing disorder. Next, Katie. I believe this was your side, Katie. You're muted. I kept hitting unmute and it didn't like me doing it. So uh, justification for uh, communication. So this is from Act 250. So students with disabilities, like all students, and I just think it's so important, so that's why I'm saying it out loud, must have the opportunity to fully participate in all aspects of education. And it ranges with academic, social, and vocational, and they should be able to effectively communicate with others is critical in this process. The IEP teams are required to consider, consider communication needs of students with disabilities and address any identified needs through a student's IEP. This is what we're using to justify Communication is in every and all areas, right? We bring this everywhere and that we need to explain how we're using it everywhere, okay? This is how we're, um, this is how we're, uh, we're, we're first of all, we're, we're documenting, you know, we all need to document and document and document. So we're documenting where all we're uh, using it, but also we have this data to give everybody else saying, hey, it needs to be used everywhere, you know? Um, and so with SIR, um, so it's saying communication must be checked if a, if a student has any, if any kind of hearing stuff going on, okay? If they're hearing impaired, um, if, they, if, they're, uh, if they're deaf, if they're deaf blind, 
it will always be yes. Okay. You're j that that's just kind of it in a nutshell. Here's just the documentation behind it, but they will be yes. If anything to, with hearing is going on, um, Communication must be checked. Communications, child, and communications plan. All right, so we got to click all three of all three of those. All right, so so he, you keep these statements in mind when you're thinking about do they qualify? Do they not qualify for this communication plan? So just having an SLP uh, that, that they're currently receiving speeches. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Been receiving speech services. It is not a requirement. I just talked about this. Uh, with somebody that's uh, in charge of all of the Leap Connect classrooms here. That so, if a child, a student is released from speech therapy, but they still have limited verbal skills, or if they if they have hearing stuff going on, or if they have some major pragmatic stuff, or if no, if they meet the criteria, the folder holder is who's requ required for it to be there. It still needs to be written. If, if they're discharged from the SLP, you don't go knock on the SLP's door and say, you need to go do this. They're not the folder holder. You, you're, you're responsible for doing it, okay? The um, If you're the lead sped. Now it needs to be done by the whole team, but the lead sped is who's saying, uh, the, the folder holder for that kid is who's saying, okay, I'm gonna make sure that this is here, okay? Um, can they communicate wants and needs with complete strangers? Um, if they can't, can they communicate wants and needs with complete strangers? If they can't, then you need to look at a communication plan. Yeah, it doesn't help if you just know what they're saying or mom exactly. knows what they're saying. You know, they're going to be in situations all through their life where they're going to have to communicate with somebody brand new. Think about intelligibility level with that. All right. Like our handy dandy, all right, were they 80% intelligible? Uh, by strangers, right? We think about that with our tick all the time. Same thing with communication, all right? If a stranger doesn't understand them, then and effectively, okay, we need a communication plan. Do they have limited uh, verbal skills? Do they have no verbal skills? Are they classified as uh, hard of hearing, deaf, or blind? These all need to be yes. So this isn't saying that, oh, it was only when they had a device is when I need to click this off. This is what's happening with this kid right now. I, it doesn't matter if they got a device going on. What's going on with them? Are they in third grade and they might just have three words? Yeah, we need a communication plan. If we're in pre-K and we just have three words, yeah, we need a communication plan, okay? So that this is if we're having those limited, major limited verbal skills. We'll go into more of those details a bit later or a bit right now. So this is just an example of what one district sets for their very specific criteria. There is not a rule saying that you need to have a specific criteria to set your communication plan. There is not a rule saying that you need to follow this specific criteria for your uh, communication plan. However, if you do set a specific criteria, you will have more fluid, fluidity, you will have more consistency amongst your district, okay? So you'll have, you'll, you know, it, you might, let's say that y'all have a really great policy in your district and then somebody came from another district and you're like, what is going on with this communication plan? This child has no words at all. He's in third grade and they wrote down a sentence. What's happening? So the, it's, it, when you have kind of some specific criteria going on, it kind of allows you to and think about whole child and, uh, and uh, catch them. So what one district did, is that if a child had five or more speech errors, articulation errors, they need a communication plan. If their language scores uh, elicited to a standard deviation that was more than two standard deviations below the mean, then you needed a communication plan, whether that was just receptive language, whether that was just expressive language, or whether that was your overall uh, composite uh, standard score and then put on the bell curve. The, uh, if their disfluencies were more than 10%, then they qualify for communication plan. If they were aphonic, a voice kid, um, then qualify for communication plan. If their pragmatic language scores were greater, were if the standard score fell to more than two standard deviations below the mean, they qualify for a communication plan. Look at how tight this is. This is just an example that a district uses. It does not mean that this is what the state is recommending. Again, this is just an example. But again, look how tight this is. This does not leave room for the imagination. That kid needs a communication plan. You are more than welcome to borrow that. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so who takes the lead for communication plan? 
So most of the time an SLP does take the, take the lead. Um, but it doesn't mean that the SLP is the one who's responsible for writing it. It is a whole IEP group um, activity. So this is, hey, the, SO, the SLP might say, hey team, I'd like to meet with y'all on whatever day. When can I catch you so that they can get some data from you so that they can build that uh, communication plan together? It's not meant to be a one man job. That's not what it was created to be. Um, if the child is dismissed, then their lead sped teacher is the folder holder is who typically takes that lead, but doing the exact same thing. Hey guys, when are y'all free? Want to get together? Let's build this and go on from there. This is building from all IEP team members. So that does mean reaching out to parents, reaching out to caregivers and talking about communication and what's that like at home as well. Okay. So this is everybody. A teacher for the deaf, um, or TBI typically take the lead if the student is deaf, deafblind, or has a hearing loss. Regardless, it is a team process. If you wanted to build on that, Justin, the uh, team process for uh, for making that communication plan, it does a lot of times fall on who was if if the child does have speech, it fell on the oh, uh, yeah. on just the SLP. Yeah, if it's just an SLP, it's kind of it becomes a failure to launch. Like usually, I like to put. A representation of a whole group of people walking on a tightrope together you know there's like a whole family of like quadruple twins and they're stacked on their shoulders they're all balancing each other that's what it's like um, to really make these things successful everyone has to be on the same page if communication just happens you know once in the speech room you know twice a week that kid won't be a very good communicator at all um, it, they have to be able to you know use these things at home um, in Miss Susie's class for English in the morning, go to PE, still have a way to communicate, and um, then end up at the end of the day with that device still working and charged and people still using it and being able to bring it home and they continue their day from there. And I'm going to tell you, so let's go to some extreme cases, okay? Let's say that you have a speech-only kid and they qualify for a communication plan because they were so disfluent. Or they qualify for a communication plan because they had so many articulation er errors. The same thing, how this is saying it's a team process, this still means that you're reaching out to the regular ed teacher and that you're reaching out to home so that you can collectively get appropriate data to go forward from there. And those are the errors they're going to be in the most anyways in the <laughs> regular classroom, whatever that may be, and at home. That's where they spend most of their waking hours. That's where it needs to be implemented the most. Absolutely. Okay, so is the communication plan template in SIR required? No, it's not. Every district has their own policies, okay? So in some districts, that answer is yes, that you need to fill out that entire communication plan tool and it needs to be attached to the IEP. Some districts say, nope, I created our entirely own tool and don't worry about that one. We adapted our own from that. Some say, you don't have to do any paperwork that goes along with it, just go write it. So every district's different. What's the state's requirement? The state, it's not. It's an extra tool that the state created. And here's this optional plan. What's the pros and cons? Pros, it makes you think about everything, okay? It makes you think about what is happening with communication receptively with person A, B, C, D in environment A, B, C, D. What is happening with person expressively, also A through E, and also receptively, and also uh, A through E. I mean, uh, at school, at home. It's also making you talk about pragmatics. It is so very thorough. This is the plan. You can see how thorough it is. And it's got some nice little links inside it, there. It, only 16 pages. Only. Um, but if you listed those pros and cons already, I mean, the pros is it actually makes you have a conversation about most of these things that could fall through the cracks if the team members weren't really comfortable having meetings and making communication plans. This makes you go through every little element that really does need to be discussed. Um, you know, but some people make their own plans and they're a bit smaller and there's a little bit more room for error perhaps. Um, but you still have to make sure you're talking about all these spots. So we still like to show it, even though it's a very long version it's very long that what's nice inside here are these uh little links i like that a lot because it talks uh you know it's got 
some, you know, let's take this one, cued language transliterating. Did you hear about that? I was just talking about that yesterday. I don't think you'll say that. So that you can go up and, uh, and say, Indeed. and go look up the definition of it and it'll just kind of jump for you and, uh, and go down. I'm gonna hop back over to the presentation. So that's just, you have access to that in SIR at the, um, that's at the very end of the IP, the same section where you're uh, saying, uh, is it Medicaid or not, or AT, uh, AT checklist. It's just a hyperlink in the back of SIR. Cons is that it's very time consuming because there's so many pages. And sometimes if it can be so time consuming, the team can be rushing through it and you might not get the most adequate information. You might not get the most uh, precise information. If you're like, oh, I just gotta do it and uh, because it just took so long because I gotta hurry up and write this communication plan. And I also have six other IEPs to do because it's April and it's IEP hot season. You know what I'm saying? So that it's got pros and cons to it. However, it is very thorough and it's, uh, it's a free tool that's already embedded. It's a really good base. I, I was talking to one district um, yesterday and the teachers that weren't really comfortable um, going through the process, they started with a state plan and they had another plan if you felt like you were advanced enough, like these things are gonna fall through the cracks, you're gonna have these discussions and they sped up the process. So they actually did it two different ways. Very Great. bizarre, but kind of cool. Here's where it is. So on the IP, this is page 14 and this is a hyperlink in SIR for communication plan. If uh, that child met the criteria for communication, whatever your district's criteria was for it, and if that child does have a communication plan, we for sure need to be checking. Yes, right there. Please don't forget that box. Okay. So I'm going to turn this over to Justin with case study and plan. Yes, um, because we want to give you a lot of different um, scenarios, but with time restraints, we're going to focus a lot on Jennifer. That is very communication device driven. Uh, we do have links for you here, so you can go back and look at just at some observation notes on Jennifer. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to look at the action plan, which is gonna be presented in the presentation itself, and some of the examples of what the documentation looks like in the IEP. Next slide, please. Now, here is Jennifer information. Um, I will spend the time to go over this one time uh, for, the rest of the presentation, this is kind of going to be the motif. If we give an example, this would be the first one we give. It's going to be Jennifer, who is in fifth grade, age 11, classified intellectual disability, secondary exceptionality, orthopedic impairment. Uh, Jennifer has a friendly, outgoing personality and enjoys interaction with both peers and adults. She seems to understand most of what others ask of her and tell her. She communicates via vocalizations, facial expressions, reaching, pointing, use of printed symbols, and an eight location static display communication device with levels. She accesses the device through pointing with her right pointer finger. She's not able to change the overlay on her device, and sometimes she will get upset when she wants to say something on the device and it's not there. She loves to interact with others and answer questions in class, but does not use her device outside the classroom or in her home environment. Jennifer uses pictures and pictures and picture symbols, particularly symbol sticks, to respond academically, indicate choices, and express wants and needs. She typically responds to questions by combining one to two symbols at most. She requires extended time to communicate responses on all tasks. Jennifer is beginning to use a touch screen to access the computer for games and for academic sites. Scene. <laughs> and this is the very first part of getting into that communication plan. And before we really break down how Jennifer's going to fill out all this, what the team's going to think about Jennifer based on the observation data, we kind of have to define our terms like modes of um, communication, uh, receptive language for some that may not be familiar with that. And that's what starts on the next slide. Mode of communication. Um, it may be obvious to, to most of us, but that's the vehicle in which communication is being carried, right? What's facilitating language, getting across from one point to the other? I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Ahead. That's all right. Um, starting off, very basic ones, just speaking, using voice, hearing, 
um, sign language, cued language, um, which very interesting, may rely on something like reading lips, hand gestures, uh, with other hints at decoding, tactile systems using tactile connections, or any other um, form of communication that's going to involve sensory input to convey what language is. I go to the next. And if you guys are just assistive technology, it may look a little weird, but in terms of defining what is technology in the speech therapy world, and particularly on the communication plan that's suggested as a template, um, there is no med tech. There's no tech, which you know is going to be gestures, um, speaking. There's low tech, uh, which would be paper, and high tech and med tech are really the same thing for the cis technology world. The big giant calculators that don't have a flashy screen, those are still high tech. The nice iPad, the $15,000 Tony Vodanovox eye gaze, high tech. And of course, we have unconventional communication, uh, which can vary from you know someone ho holding your hand, walking you to over what they want, and placing it there, or just knocking all the blocks down in a form of protest. <laughs> all those are different forms of communication. And uh, firstly, receptive is how we perceive language through those modes of communication. And when we're talking about receptive language right here, we're talking about how is this student, how is Jennifer understanding the language that people are giving her? And right here isn't the action plan, but this is what's occurring right now in the classroom. Um, the mode of communication is mostly no tech. So everyone is usually speaking to her in most environments. There are some access to low-tech symbols and boards. Uh, does have a eight location static device, but it apparently is not being consistently used in each environment. Now expressive language in terms of Jennifer is how she's gonna convey language to us using whatever mode of communication there is. So we're talking about her receiving the language. This is her expressing language. Yep. Justin, I have to tell you this visual, it, when I saw it, when you put it there, and, and SLP is asked by their co, I've been asked by, um, by other team members, what do you mean language? What are you talking about? And I, when you got it, this picture I think encompasses it beautifully. So y'all please use this picture. We killed it, y'all. We killed it. So for her expressive language, um, a lot of no tech, vocalizations, facial gestures, reaching, pointing, does have access to some low tech symbols on a board that she'll point using her right index finger, and does have access to that eight location static display. Uh, though again, across environments, we'll see, you know, in the classroom, she has access to that high-tech device. It's not really happening extracurricular. It's still going to be pointing, gesturing, um, <clears throat> grunt, um, vocalizations, and not community and not at home. Now, this... Um, particular part of the communication plan is interesting because we don't want to confuse their ability to understand and use language with their ability to use the communication device or the mode of communication. And I will, we'll show you some examples um, pretty soon, but you may have someone that's very good with language, but they're not really good at using a particular mode of communication. So it's really two different things we're balancing out, how much they understand, how much they can express with language and how well can they use that communication device. And we break it down for you slide by slide. Next. So language, um, a one would be, you know, no use or really attempts to communicate or represent a word. Then it goes to two, single word, three two-word phrases, four three-word plus phrases, then five very good syntax and complete sentences. And we have some examples for you on the next slide. This one's easy, go. They use the word go, and that could easily be sign language as well. Um, go to the next one. 
uh, putting two words together. It doesn't just have to be, uh, you know, these actual symbols being used, um, all modes of communication. It's just very simple for us to give you a really good hint of combinations of words to build up that mastery by using these symbols right here. Next, uh, may look like I go bathroom, right? We're using phrases, we're in the ballpark, but then we hit that number five, then we're killing it with full on sentences. Can I go to the bathroom? You know, they may even throw on some punctuation there. Now right here in the mode of communications um, is more so focusing on how well that device is being used and operated. Um, and actually, are they using it? Uh, so one would be, they're not using the uh, mode of communication. Uh, two, occasionally using it would prompted, you have to remind them. Uh, three, use communication system with little or no prompting with some error. Uh, four, can use their communication mode, which, you know, for us in Spring to AEC, most of the time it's going to be something like a tablet, but they're able to go back and fix it. Like if they get lost, they go back, make a correction. They use the wrong word. They don't give up. They go back, they use the right one and fix it. And then five, no, no clear errors. Um, they have really good syntax. They're able to find what they're looking for. They're able to construct the language they're looking for using that mode of communication. And we got some examples for you right here. Uh, two, and we'll, we'll play maybe about a one minute of this. Get hit the play. Oh, you went back. You went forward in time. So very early stage. You can skip to like thirty seconds or something like that. That's cool. And you'll see very early stages. And this is what it's like a lot with with introducing a device to a kid. You sit there. You're playing. You're having fun. And you know, sometimes he forgets the device is there. Do you model it? Look at him. It's like, oh yeah, there's something there. Nah, no, I don't care. No. I just want to play I these two. Trade. You scrolling through? I think he does. Yeah, right there, Katie. Guitar. Yeah. I don't have the guitar today. Whistle. Whistle, sure. Yeah. You. Whistle. Whistle. That's good, Katie. So, at the very, very um, beginning stages of using that mode of communication, but that—that's how it starts um, for a um, a lot of students here. Uh, this one you can fast forward probably to about the very end uh, during the puzzle activity. And he just needs a, a little bit of prompting. They're Here going go. through their building puzzle. Toy. Sometimes he puts toy, toy instead of puzzle. You want puzzle or toy? Yeah. You're he he wants to say puzzle. puzzle. Yep, say no toy. Puzzle. Every time he says toy, it's a little inaccurate, so we hand him a toy. Toy. Here you go. That's not puzzle, puzzle, that's toy. It's like, no, that's not what I want. Toy. Yeah, this is, look, Junior, look. I know. I know. Just one more minute, okay? So we can work in front of them. Puzzle. Puzzle? Okay. Look, that's a puzzle. And then we can just model. Puzzle. Look, puzzle. 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 Here you go. You want to finish more? your puzzle? No more? All but done? Why don't we put in all the pieces but one and then we want more to finish for that Closer to Max. She, she didn't do Max assist, but like closer. Mm, They're pretty close. Yeah, not Max assist okay. where the Look, therapist one was. One more. Therapist like no, slow down. Yeah. One more. And therapist is just bringing these? him a little closer. One yeah, more. We have time to watch this. Puzzle. Yeah. One, One more. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and fast forward. Eventually, he does get it on his own. He's like, "Yeah, a puzzle. That's what I want." And um, he communicates, communicates a few more things for the end, but he does it's start to do some of the self-correction. But it took you a want these? Puzzle. puzzle. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, this one, um, fast forward through my introduction, but you'll see Javori Hi, here is, is pretty Justin amazing. Sims from That's me, y'all. But you'll see sometimes he'll go in the wrong folder, but he self-corrects. So 
right now we just asked them, you know, you're going to be on YouTube. Is there anything you want to say to your voice? Please. So there he self-corrected, picked the wrong option. Nice. What's his access method? Okay. He's using a, a joystick. Do you like to play Mr. Potato Head? For the cursor. Study. And then clicks Mr. with Potato his Head. knee. So a joystick moves the mouse, his Who knee left clicks. Mom. And we, we can move on because we, we spent a long time trying Hi, to find Hi, this is we Justin Sims from, uh, from Louisiana. The last video. But, you know, right there, he self-corrected. You know, he, he didn't want the plural version of plays. Uh, he went back to play because that's what he wanted. And that took no prompting. I mean, he, he really got to that point and he used it really well um, with his limited mistakes. You could play the, the whole one of these, Katie. I think so. So this is kind of the I'm pinnacle, sure really good syntax. Mm -hmm. Really good use of the communication device. Hi. But John, you've told me quite a story. Why don't you hit speak display so everybody can hear the whole story? Thank you. It was time to eat. I wait and wait. No one there. No one come. I am afraid no one here will help me eat. I wait more. She come and say to me you don't tell. She brag and me. She go away. I wait more. Well, I'm glad you could tell me about it. Is there something you need me to do to fix it? You can take care of it yourself. Excellent. So, yeah, no errors. And, of course, um, you know, he got that communication device. He's able to use it in all those environments. And can communicate with strangers, as just demonstrated. So right here uh, with our girl, Jennifer, this is what it looks like filled out for her. Uh, family and caregivers, her, her language usage is not very highly demonstrated, definitely not with the system she has right now. Um, an eight location device that sometimes gets used at school, but it's not really getting used at home um, and not really getting used with peers. Um, so language, very, very emergent. And the use of that technology is very, very emergent as well. Oh, that's a lot of good questions that you were thinking about earlier, Katie. So we're going to go through and kind of break down each one of these um, to understand um, that kid's ability to communicate with others. Um, opportunities provided throughout the day, uh, communications uh, supports the systems, backup plans that you have to have. You know, what's that kid going to do? If they're going to PE and they can't bring the $15,000 Toby Dada box with them, what's, what's the plan to make that happen? How are educators going to interact with a student? How are peers going to interact with a student um, using their mode of communication? You go next. And that's one thing that any plan really needs to have, even if you don't like the big exhaustive state plan, but you have to think of each and every environment um, and who that kid's going to be interacting with all the times during the day and each time's an opportunity where they're on the playground it's an opportunity when it's circle time they're sitting down or if they're just you know doing recreational um, games as you see here to the right and one thing we do like to stress um, and we plug in a lot of videos if you do have a very expensive device and they're going to be some place where the dynamic device may be damaged or if the device loses battery or if it breaks or something it's good to have a backup and the easiest way if you have a high-tech device is just take a screenshot if you have an ipad you just click those two buttons and it takes a screenshot and you print it um, as was demonstrated earlier you can pull out the full displays of all the major languages uh, just off your computer for words for life for a little uh, to go 
speak for yourself, uh, cough drop. Um, those are just a few, like a Google search away. And then we, and we can share away. those resources with y'all as well. The, yes. you know, we live in a place where hurricanes are prevalent. So when there is no electricity and when there is no, you have to have a backup plan. What is your backup plan? If there's no, no electricity, the batteries are out. That's a requirement, part of the communication plan. What, what happens at that point. But also it's beneficial. I have one teacher, she refused to bring the AAC device to the lunchroom. And I said, okay. And so I laminated a core board. And what ended up happening is all the pre kers in that class used the laminated core board as a placemat in the lunchroom. It was really nice. So it can turn it into some beneficial stuff to, uh, uh, to have across all environments to have that paper. Definitely. I mean, if other kids get in trouble for talking at lunch, why why can't they? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone should be able to get in trouble equally. (laughs) You got the next one. Equal opportunities. This one we're going to really make a whole presentation about almost when we go to implementation implementation and Mm -hmm. uh, methodology with AAC. Yeah. Uh, But one of the most important parts of the plan is discussing, you know, how are you going to use this uh, with the educators, with family members? Um, what kind of procedures are going to be used? And we did want to give you at least some links, what we're going to exhaustively talk about next Friday. Uh, but everyone needs to make a plan for being trained in how to model language. Uh, being trained when you're ready to ask the question after you modeled it hundreds of times perhaps before you really start pushing them and asking questions that you know they can answer you um, you know what's the hierarchy how hands on do you need to be and um w- we saw actually that one video we were discussing the unintentional you know mom was being a really really direct you know but you want to give them a lot of wait time um, you want to ask and pause um, and sometimes I'll say up, up to about 20 seconds. And if, I, if I'm quiet for 20 seconds, it gets weird. But that's how long it is sometimes when you're teaching them, hey, you got a voice now, it's your turn to do something. So those awkward pauses and time to process that language uh, really does help. And this will also be a ton into that in, uh, methodology as well with these uh, resources right there for Core Word of the Week. Yes, but there's there's a lot of stuff out there um, that will give you some structure and some what I call light scripting or starting points. Um, so there's stuff for classroom. What can a teacher say during ELA on the kid's device? There's lots of good examples out there that's going to lay it out for you. What can mom and dad say at home while they're cooking, for example? And, and of course, you want to have a lot of opportunities where you just talk and things aren't scripted, but this is a pretty good start. Oh, Tady's getting one good. Oh, there, we're cooking, y'all. I don't want it. Okay. Put more. Stop, no more. How, How much? much? It's great. No, and that you. one's just the modeling one. The, uh, and then this one was the full planner. Look at that. I tell you, I cook with my kids, and uh, I frequently say, stop it. That's a really good phrase that goes with cooking as well. Look at all the core words that they associated with just this activity. And then color coded it to let you know about the prevalence and kind of. Yeah, open containers, closed containers, my turn, your turn. What a great resource. Put more in. I mean, we could just talk, you know, five plus uh, phrases. So we did want to provide that to you. That's something we're going to hit heavily Uh, next week, but this is the place where it needs to start being planned out of how people are actually going to use this kid's communication system to encourage its use and demonstrate how to use it. And uh, Katie, we were going to talk about the, there's a lot of data collection as well. You may want to make a plan to see, you know, what words are being used and then expound upon that. So there are some uh, some devices that have the data already embedded to so have those systems already embedded. So Toby's got a pretty good system. Cough Drop's got a pretty good system um, to where it's where the users themselves are saying, okay, how many times are they modeling in a day? A day? 
what parts of language are being modeled during the day, but then you can also make low tech paper based, based off of that as well of just, you know, okay, did, did I model, here was the word, uh, here was the core word, did I model, did I make sure that I did it during circle time, did I make sure that I modeled it during centers and at the cafeteria, some quick, you definitely want to make it quickie so that people actually do it, but um, data collection is a really great way to see um, so you can do data collection for just the modeling, but then also data collection for just the spontaneous use as well. Um, that's the, the seeing the both the user and the spontaneous use. There's some pretty cool tracking features in cough drop for that. But the, um, just, just ideas for out there because we do need to talk about it in this communication plan and how it's being uh, utilized. Um, so in the communication plan, you also need to talk about behavior because behavior will and forever always be communication. They might not be communicating functionally, but they are communicating something. Macaroni on the wall instead of sitting on the table said, I don't want it. So <laughs> the, uh, so we still, so we need to talk about that. So in it, we do need to talk about what was the function of that behavior. Were they escaping? Were they protesting, avoiding? Were they trying to get something, obtain something? Um, what were they communicating there? Um, there's that tool that for the FBA. And it, you, in the communication plan itself, when you're talking about their communicative behavior, you are explaining what was the antecedents of that behavior? What is the very, very detailed description of the behavior themselves? you are not writing they acting up they have an attitude they're bad that's we're avoiding that we're saying they ha are head butting they yeah. are disrespect they are head butting they are biting they are rip paper they run away from adults they uh when mom lets them out the car they run in the street you're saying exactly what their body is doing okay and then what's the consequences for eliciting that behavior so um what was the plan of action also for when behavior is elicited here's what happens immediately after that um and so what we're trying to do what the goal you know is to morph of saying what was the positive behavior that happened and then what was the consequence that happened from that uh targeted positive behavior that can, that's a, a pd within itself and so now going on to section two justin and we got 15 left yes um so right here is um, her uh, blanks being filled in of everything we just covered. Um, so for those multiple opportunities, um, they want her to use it more throughout the day, um, in the morning, in meetings, during weather, and definitely during like morning. That's the perfect time to have just some daily modeling. Because every day you go in the classroom, you may say the Pledge of Allegiance, you may say what the day is, what the food's going to be, what you're going to do for the day, the following day. That's a really good way to introduce the same words every day over and over and over again. Um, they did use low-tech boards um, as a backup, which is fantastic. And But the only problem is right now only the SLP is the one really modeling the high-tech device. So it's not really beginning to sink in. Uh, they do want the staff to honor all the attempts, even if she gets frustrated, to try to sort, you know, what the appropriate word would be. But they're having trouble changing those overlays very quickly. Um, you can go to the next, Katie. Katie, I believe that person that was having trouble with her sound has it resolved. Got it. Okay. Thank Fantastic. You. Uh, another good one that we're about to break down a little bit, but we have to describe how that direct communication is going to work across all contexts. Um, how is Jennifer going to use her communication tool um, during instruction with peers during instruction? Teachers, um, how they're going to be able to use that possibly during assessments and talking with your shoulder partner when it's a peer? How is it going to work, you know, on the playground or in music class? Go next. I believe this is your slide, Katie. All right, so we want to describe how they're using direct communication across any and all contexts. And does the teacher provide direct instruction using the student's primary language mode of communication? Y'all, that to be right there, we need to like put that on a billboard and bring it everywhere, put that on a t-shirt. Are you uh, doing instruction with the student's primary language mode of communication, i.e. their AAC system. So how do we do that? We do that with aided language stimulation. Um, so just 
a definition of that, it is a strategy to promote both symbol comprehension and symbol production among individuals who use graphic mode of communication systems. The communication partner is directly accessing the AAC system while simultaneously verbalizing. Do you want to go to the store? And I'm only worried that I'm hitting this go because they're an MLU of one or under. Do you want to go to the store? Utilizing that in any and all environments, this is where it comes into that communication plan. Building from there, um, this is where you're uh, writing that all out is in the instructional settings, what's going on with assessments with it. And then when we're uh, in those ancillary classes um, among staff and peers, this would also be a good thing. Like if they go to dance after school, what's going on at dance after school, the, uh, you'd write that right there as well. Um, so with the classroom considerations, Y'all, uh, we looked at each one of these in detail when uh, talking about um, when you look at like cue language transliterate. So that uh, this is for kind of deaf blind um, when you're talking about when they when they do those cues in the hand. You know what I'm saying? Um, we talked about those a bit. I'm sorry, we talked about them right here. The um, also, so the second section right here, you see in the C print FM system. So right here, you're thinking more of deaf or deaf blind itself. And then right here, you're thinking more of uh, uh, hard of hearing. Uh, and then right here, uh, what's going on on the side? Is there no tech, uh, high tech? And this is for Jennifer. So Jennifer was uh, instructions delivered directly by the teacher um, and that instruction um, using one or more of the following. She was getting some no tech the speech gestures and pointing reaching with facial expressions. She's got some low tech with some picture symbols and boards and she got some high tech. Uh, only the SLP uses the device, so no. And then what additional language and communication supports are needed to help the student participate and make progress in the general education curriculum. So modeling by everyone need to model one language level above her level, right? Because we wanna model what's our next step uh so if she combines two word two symbols to express something that we sh then we should be modeling on three and we may need to consider a device that can grow with her and we need to look at a more dynamic aac tool i think that you were alluding to a mid tech device which is eight pictures on there right that um that she yep. was getting um which is not a dynamic uh tool Okay, so two more important questions. What strategies are utilized uh, or made available to support the students participating in incidental learning for students who use symbols to communicate? What symbol system is used and why? Well, let's jump into the incidental learning. An easy way for incidental learning, plop core boards everywhere. Uh, if you could put them on the playground, put them at the entrance of a school, and then those incidental learning is those peers walking up. Incidental learning happened all the time just with my lanyard and having a core board on my lanyard and some other kids that are randomly in the hall and not on my caseload are just walking up and pointing and using the words on my lanyard. Incidental learning because I'm holding the hand of uh, the friend that's about to go to therapy. Um, with symbol sets, these are just some examples of what symbol sets can look like. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that when you're use, utilizing, so let's say that they have a high tech uh, Proloco device, that you're using the same Proloco uh, low tech. Okay, yeah, that you're minutes. using the same same symbol system. Um, and then and right it, here, in mm -hmm. regards to symbol systems, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll go. We're gonna beat you over head with a stick about all the different uh, things between symbol sets um, next Friday. But the main thing that you'll probably be discussing, you know, is how much is it going to be motor planning to how much of it is going to be categorized by parts of speech because they're already pretty fluent with language and have a hard time getting it out. So usually when you're talking about symbol sets and you're not using what you already have, because sometimes you don't want to introduce a second language to that classroom already speaks, you know, men speak. Uh, but you're kind of looking how much motor planning to how much full on grammar and syntax that person has when you're making these um, selections for symbol sets. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so what strategies are utilized to make uh, to support for incidental learning? This little girl had no strategies and the only tools were used uh, during structured learning activities so that they need to ensure that uh, our personnel are modeling in any and all environments and uh, and providing those prompts. Um, for students who use symbols to communicate what symbol system is utilized, she only uses symbol sticks. So she's not using, uh, um, she's using symbol sticks uh, and not part of a language mode. Now, there are some 
some, there are some languages, there are some AAC apps that utilize symbol sticks in there, but they haven't even started that, that language system yet. Um, so her action plan from the previous IEP, so this was her uh, instructional settings. She uses symbol sticks to utilize core and fringe words, the SLP and the SPED teacher will consult on the vocabulary. And then the mode, they'll honor any appropriate communication attempt that consists of vocalizations, pointing, reaching, facial expressions, slow tech, boards, and dynamic display. And her assessments that she'll also have the opportunity with symbol sticks. And the same exact thing from before and the same for extracurricular activities and also the same modes and all of those as well. Um, and then at the bottom, what assistive technology must the student use to access in the general curriculum? Some low tech boards that go along with the curriculum and some dynamic di display that utilizes those simple sticks. Um, and so describe how the student's receptive and expressive language uh, communication supports needs. So in the environments device will be present in all environments and training uh, needs to happen so that everybody can model social context, create opportunities for her to interact with peers outside of the classroom, assembly, recess, lunch, get her out there with those regular kids. And uh, I would go uh, sometimes a step forward for like number five, I would put the training dates as well. The teachers mm -hmm. will be trained <laughs> on how to do this kind of stuff here. This is what other schools and staff are going to be trained. Mm -hmm. This is the date we're going to train the parents to give them some examples. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only person I wouldn't put a date for training would be the peers. That's, yeah. you know, I would, they would be yeah. more than willing to just sit down next to them and they'll be excited. So then it just goes details of like, how are uh -huh. they going to get support in each one of those? So you see how it just kind of goes in depth at that point. Um, so what type of training do we need? So we need to do a consult with the AT team uh, to get a new tool. Um, all the staff and family also need to be trained on how to model, what's this vocabulary? How do we prompt? Um, describe how the student uses direct communication. This is, wasn't applicable uh, because this was for a deaf, hard of hearing area. What role does the student play in managing their own communication system? Well, they need to have the low and high tech tools fully charged, going to school every day, and she'll have to input what she, what things she likes in her personal info. Um, she'll be assisted on that, but she definitely needs to be a part of it. And that she'll utilize a communication matrix and communication profile and unique learning assessments and language samples to describe her skill development. How are we going to track this? How is she going to build and how are we going to uh, assess that? So when looking at an IEP, um, we definitely in the GSI, um, so she he, he uh, highlighted behavior right here because right here she becomes frustrated and screams when a word choice that she desires is missing and they can't convey desired objects. So she has these behaviors, it needs to be described and quite specifically right there, it needs to be described. Right here in the GSI, this is where you're writing your communication plan. If a child is checked off for a communication plan, this is not the place for a one sentence. Okay, this is a, this is a large. I've seen it. The, uh, this is where we're going really, really in detail from all of the data that you've just collected, and now we're writing this yeah. narrative. Yeah, it should cut off, and then the rest of it goes to the back of the yes. IEP, right? It should have an appendix page and, for sure. And, and speaking of that, hit the next slide. Uh, there out. you go. That's part one, y'all. We, yeah. we don't have time to read all that, but that's everything we've been Look talking about, but reflected in the plan, because mm -hmm. if it's not in the IEP, how do you know it's getting done, right? Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate form of documentation. Of course, if it's going to be assist technology, we have to hit this area, Katie, next. And I'm putting and, my fingers up because these are, there's four required areas for AAC oh. to be on an IEP. And the first was the GSI and communication plan. The second is this spot right here, the AT spot. You cannot write right here a specific device. You cannot write right here that they're using an iPad. You can't say iPad, you can't say a uh, lamp, but you can say a dynamic, uh, a high-tech dynamic device that the student accesses directly, something like that. You just would go to, on to describe, describe the uh, device itself versus name brands. Um, so this was her example for what they're writing in the uh, inside there. So that uh, they're, he's uh, just describing it within detail and how it's utilized. Um, the third area that it needs to be in, that's not written right here, but the third area needs to be in is the goal. So it needs to be in at least one goal. If this child is getting speech therapy, I highly suggest checking off that teacher as well. And then it also needs to be in the accommodation section. So he uh, highlighted some areas where uh, AAC can be checked off on. Um, so see right there, the hearing device, and not just AAC, the the a communication plan communication needs to be right in for, yeah, everything that's in the communication plan for sure. Um, change background, font, the uh, 
yeah, X this out. I'll, I'll put X over PEX. Pe- 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 pretend you know, it's, it's not there. It's, it's not a language system. I mean, it's they not. may be using PEX for communicational yeah. intent and some structure, yeah. but if we're talking language system, PEX will openly tell you that's not what they do. And if it's being used that way, it's being used way beyond its intention and scope. Yes. Hey, um, Justin, uh, we had a question. Can you provide an example of a communication matrix? Uh, so you'll see, you'll get to see a yeah. communication matrix in depth when uh, with assessments, uh, mm-hmm. the assessments uh, session, session that's next Friday. week, yep. uh, next week, Friday. So they're uh, going to do screening and assessments and a communication matrix is one of those. And uh, Justin's got a profile built within that so that you can see it within depth of, of its use. And it's very thorough. Um, okay, and then we have someone else that's wanting to, I guess, verbally ask a question. That's fine. Do you want to take that now or sure. you want to wait? We'll take it now. Sure. Okay, let's see if I can get her mic on. Grace them with a voice. Why can we not use specific brands at the GSI box? We're not supposed to talk about any brands in an IEP whatsoever. We're not the, you want to expand on that more, Justin? The only yeah. sneaky spot that I've ever seen of where you can be specific on a brand is in the comment section of the progress report. That is the only spot. Yeah, a lot that I've seen. We'll tell you at the very least it's best practice um, because you know, software changes, hardware changes very frequently. Um, you, you don't want to dig yourself into a hole very quickly. I'm using the iPad 7, you know, with Proloquo version 7.9. Um, and, so, and then that becomes unavailable at some time. Justin, I don't have the ability on my end as a panelist to um, turn her mic on. All right. Um, it's go Dana ahead. Hubbard. Let me see if I can do that. As he's grabbing uh, grabbing that, I'm just kind of going through the IEP right here where y'all be writing and checking off and putting in uh, putting in those. All right, Dana, I- can you uh, hey. communicate? What's up? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I work with deaf and hard of hearing kids. Um, and on your accommodations page, there's a number of accommodations that pertain to the deaf and hard of hearing population. Um, across the state, every district is using some of these differently. So for example, someone might check off FM system or they might check off hearing device or they might check off both. We also might have communication assistance related to hearing loss only checked off. But when you ask the question of what a team means when they check that off, they don't really know. It's hard to, with FM system, like if you're checking off FM system, however, that entire field is moving more to towards sound field systems and not specifically FM systems or, where yeah, do you, you know or ultra high frequency U, UHF instead of FM it, I mean yeah you get to hair splitting as well sure. well and that's what I'm wondering I'm wondering if in our state um like we uh there's a, a group of us that have made a survey to send out to deaf educators in the state to try to find out how they're using each of those mm-hmm. because there isn't one for digital modulation either um or all we, the would lo- we would love to work with you and get that data because sure. we, we would also like to take that data to, to, to use statewide as well. Um, okay. we'd love to, we would love to work with you. Yeah, yeah for sure. absolutely. We'll collection. follow up afterwards. Thank great. you. Yeah, absolutely. we have a great comment here. Um, uh, they mentioned why can we not use specific brands in the ATGSI box when uh, the when IP itself lists PEC, Whisperphone, Kurzweil, um, that so. is the conversation of the year. Yes, so it is. It is the conversation of the year about what there are three. There, uh, there are definitely the two that are talked about that are in the accommodation section constantly. That are like why is Pex and Kurzweil in there? If they're uh, if they're brands, I can't give you the answer um, um, because we're, I don't know. If, I don't know if Justin can. No, we can't really give you the answer there. Um, really, it's like free advertisement. <laughs> it, it's the way I look at it. Uh, though I, I did talk to a former um, SPED supervisor of the state before. They were like, well, people requested Kurtz Wall, so we put it in there. But, like, but then we're also discouraged at one of, one of them the is least about to come off, from though. being very specific. I, I can't um, remember which one's about to come off, but one of them's about to come off because they're, they're, uh, the contract with the state runs out this year. So one of them's about to come off of accommodations. But um, at, at the very least... Um, it's usually just uh, discouraged for something specific. Definitely when it's very generalized, like Kurtzwall, that does 
you know, everything that, you know, reading and write for Google does, the reading and write for Google, is it on there, you know, but you may, anyway, let's continue this whole other. It is a large conversation. It really really is. is. Um, Okay. So we jumped into, so, and we're, we're definitely past the end, but for y'all to know, there is this fan, this is gold right here. So Justin made just tons of examples of writing IEP goals. He made these all clickable to where you're going within those examples, jump over there. I mean, it's very, very thorough. You have this now at your fingertips and he quoted it all. It, so that, not, um, yeah, manifesto, but usually when you get IEP goals, uh, can you go back to one? And we'll skip over Jennifer goals. It's gonna be one AT is usually the vehicle to achieve the goal. Um, you know, in math class, it may be, you know, they will indicate more to indicate a quantity a qu- um, quantity or quality of something. Uh, but also, sometimes you may need a goal for them to be res- more responsible with the AT device, that they're going to keep up with it and bring it classroom to classroom. Or if they're eye gaze, you may, rare cases, have a goal, uh, not just about communicating with it, but, you know, being able to calibrate effectively mm-hmm. each time. Mm-hmm. And other times uh, for goals, it may just be part of that uh, present level environment, um, like an FM system. You won't say give an FM system, we're going to do work, you know, it, but it may need to be mentioned in the environment, you know, um, kind of above the goal, mm-hmm. uh, just to let people know it's still there and it's still part of the picture. Um, all right, so we're skipping over Jennifer's goals. Of course, uh, so we're in the next part of the uh building into the support needs. So they were saying that they need um, definitely multiple modes of communication and vocabulary. We did want to mention that you can, so this is the minute section. However, some people have just mentioned right here in the comments, you can mention that AAC is used across all school environments and sent home. If your district does have a policy that does allow for their AAC systems to go home every night and on the weekends and in the summer, this is a great place to plop that uh, right there. Um, and then, of course, right here is our uh, that AT consideration checklist. It is varied across different districts. There are some districts that no matter who what's going on with that child and IP happens, you must have an AT consideration checklist done. Some districts are, we, we just use that tool for the AT team to even identify that child to, hey, we need to come out and do an assessment. It's really used uh, differently across all districts. However, it is right there for y'all and it's a clickable link and this is what it looks like. Um, and again, it's got a variety of use across districts and LEAs. You do have these different links right here for uh, communication plans from other districts and just kind of how they're written out. Um, and also you have more access to other case studies and the uh, action plans and documentation that goes along with that. If y'all have any other questions, please make sure to contact us. If you were like, you know what, our whole district needs everybody that's in SPED and our district needs this training on uh, communication plans and IPs, because there's a lot that goes into it, contact us. The, contact us and we're definitely, we're here to help. We're here to, uh, we're here to help the kids in school. So for sure, um, we're here for you. If y'all have any other questions, there was, I think it was Ms. Dana that she was asking if she could be unmuted to ask a question. Am I right? Yeah, we did that. Yes, it was Dana. Ms. Dana, Hubbard. was it, but there were two people that were asking to oh, be unmuted. The, no, we, um, we got her. Got her. Okay. Okay, great. The, um, Okay, because I thought it was somebody else that said One it. was asking the question about the communication matrix and one was just saying they had a question. Yeah, we got it. Okay, great. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Um, uh, thank you guys uh, so much for joining. Um,